Yo, what the? F I know the most people this ain't a big deal, but it's two two thirty in the morning. Doors will be temporary locked between ten and five. I know they change it from goals to crunch, but that's not my problem. I used to pay goals, and now I'm paying crunch. I've already then did all the deals, switched up. Hey man, I ain't that ain't my problem. I can't work out. I got out of bed, took pre-workout, put on my workout shoes and everything. That's not a big deal to most people. I could just go home and go to sleep, relax. I don't have to work out today. But you ain't you ain't into this the way I'm into this. Have you not seen my videos? Have you not seen the physique? Have you not seen the lifts? How you think I get that? By working hard, shutting my mouth and putting in work every day, grinding. Yes, you take breaks. I take breaks when I want to, but I'm in here. I'm amped up, ready to go do the champ shit. Hey, man, come like Scott. Shit, holler back at your boy. All right, so I got in the gym, and um, the gym is changing, like I said, from goals to crunch. And I guess in the meanwhile, they're um, locking the doors. Now, I was working out all the way over here. I'm warming up with um, squats. And I don't even have my belt on. This is a slight weight to me. But somebody's knocking on the window and the door right there. And All right, so I got in the gym. And um, the gym is changing, like I said, from goals to crunch. And I guess in the meanwhile, they're um, locking the doors. Now, I was working out all the way over here. I'm warming up with um, squats. And I don't even have my belt on. This is a slight weight to me. But somebody's knocking on the window and the door right there. And like I say, man... I protect my own safety. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know who out there. That's 45-45 and a 10 on each side and a 45-pound bar. So I put my headphones on and I'm listening to myself. And on my way out, I'm making sure that I'm watching out for anybody trying to get in on my car, man. No. I mean, even though it's not even on my car. All right, on my way out, I had to give myself my little um, traditional pat down. I always do um, three things. Keys, wallet, phone. Make sure I got those. Anything else don't matter, but I also say keys, wallet, phone, and belt. Now, um, because whenever I go in there and deadlift for a squat or whatever, I make sure I got all my stuff. This belt ain't nothing but like 30 something bucks, but I've bought like a thousand belts because um, a lot of times I leave my belt in there, uh, mainly because other people keep talking to me, they distract me, and I'll be trying to get away from them. And not blaming everybody for all my problems, but if it sounds like that, but I just want to cover my own butt. Like I say, my gym has changed into another gym. It's the same gym, but it's a different, same location, different owners, different this and different that and the third, blah, blah, blah. Cheaper price, which is great financially, but terribly because it's going to be packed and then New Year's just happened or whatever. But like I said before, it's not my business. If somebody's beating on the window and they're trying to get in and they can't get in, that's not my fault. That's between y'all and the gym. People be getting mad and stuff. Like, that's between y'all and the gym, man. I couldn't get in at first. Y'all hey, seen my short video. It's supposed to be somebody in there letting us in. I went to try to find that person to let the other people in, which I didn't really... I don't want people in the gym. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> even though that's not what I want, I'm a nice guy. I don't own the gym. But it's not my obligation to even go and search and find that person to let the other person in. The other person must have left because I couldn't find the person. Right? And that person was beating Beating on the door, I had went to the bathroom, I went back to the locker room, I went to put my belt away after I did my squats, da da da. Uh, but yeah, man, um, the reason why I'm saying all of this is because, hey man, I almost missed the workout because of this. I gotta go to work today. I'm very obligated, I'm very goal orientated. I go to the gym for results and results only. I don't go in there to see nobody else. People stop and they look in there while I'm talking to myself, I got a phone out. I don't go to the gym for nobody else, man. For real, minding your business is a very key part of life right now, bro. It is. I don't care what nobody think, do, or say. I'm in there for me. I don't get results talking to you. I don't get results stopping my workout and talking for 45 minutes. And everybody think I'm wrong for that. But guess what nobody has? Results. <laughs> yeah, but what I was saying too, man, it's... um. What I'm saying is this, man. Um, safety first, of course. Oh, and that's why y'all not seeing me. Y'all seeing videos of stuff I've already posted. This and that and the third, blah, blah blah. Um, because I'm not pointing the camera at myself or pointing it at the road right now because I'm focused on the road right now. It's four o'clock in the morning. Um, there's not barely anybody on the road. Um, different places have different 
Oh, in my city, there's a lot of people. I don't live, yo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But nah, man, you got to understand everything's different, all right? So, I just cut the camera back on because I was leaving. And in the parking lot, somebody else was trying to get in. And they couldn't get in. Somebody was letting them in. Um, I am not letting nobody in, like I said. But I said something about something. I guess they were trying to flag me down. I should have gave them the cold shoulder. Um, not to sound mean, but just to elaborate more on what I'm speaking on about people in the gym. I don't want them to think that we're friends. You know, we're not enemies. I don't, I'm not against anybody. It's not nothing personal. But it is because I want my personal results. You know what I'm saying? Too many people halfway know you, especially down here in South Carolina. It's that Southern hospitality, which is great, but it gets on my nerves a lot. You know, um, I don't, I'm not just in South Carolina. I've been down here since 08. Um, I've been, that, that's what I'm saying. I've been down here since 08. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't still be here. I just, <laughs> it's just the Southern hospitality. You do get much of, you know, you do get a little bit much too much in the that. Man, man, how you talk? I don't know how to talk, because I don't talk. Don't talk, all right? I talk in front of this camera, and that's it, man. Other than that, I'm business oriented, I'm goal oriented. People say, oh, but you can't live your life like that. Yes, you can. Um, but you can't enjoy life like that. And you gotta, you know, rewind and unwind and go on vacation and stop and stop doing. No, I, I find enjoyment in, in, in reaching my goals, all right? If you find your enjoyment in, in doing all these temporary things, um, then you're gonna only enjoy when you're doing these temporary things. You're gonna only enjoy your life when you go on vacation. You're gonna only enjoy your life when you're drinking and doing whatever it is that you're unwinding to, to do. At the end of the day, if you want, if you want to make results, you gotta have sacrifices in your life. And you will enjoy those things even more. Like, okay, let's say I don't go to the club. I've been to the club maybe five times in my whole life, and I'm almost 40 years old. Cause it ain't my scene. <laughs> But let's say it was, all right, for those who it is, all right? Um, you don't go to the club, you're crazy. I'm crazy every time I don't do something exactly the way you do. You don't hear me saying you crazy for not doing what I do. I don't understand it, but I don't understand why you go to the gym and don't work out. I don't get that at all. I wouldn't be doing that, but uh, but it's up to you. Like I say, I always say it's up to you. But let's say I did go to the club, right? Went to the club. I love the club. But I'm always in there. So after a while, it becomes like an everyday regular thing. It's like you live there now. You're in there every day. It's a little bit fun. But just imagine if you let yourself miss it for a while. Handle other business. Accomplish other goals. Then you go back to the club. Now you got more money. You can pop more bottles. You can do all. You can have more fun. You can be in the VIP section. Jumping on the couch with Chris Brown in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Just think about it. <laughs> or whatever floats your boat, eh? But at the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. Just imagine if you were a person who had a good amount of money and you traveled a lot, right? And you took flights all the time. Um, just imagine you fly 5,000 times a month, a year, whatever. Damn, 5,000 days in a year. Let's say you flew 100 times a year. I don't know. I don't know a good number. I only flow once in my life, right? So let's say you're used to first class. You got money. Let's say first class was booked and you had to get to where you're going and you had to ride coach for a while. You're going to be like, wow, they're not greeting me with peanuts and, and, and I don't have luxury seats. I got to sit here with crying babies and baby mamas and stuff all around me. Well, you used to being in, in, in quiet and tranquility and, and sipping on whatever you're sipping on, flying, just being... You know, just imagine how much more you are, you are, imagine how much you will enjoy first class the next time you, you fly first class. Or imagine the first time you fly first class. You know what I'm saying? Imagine the first time you fly first class. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, I ain't never flown like this. But every day you do it. Let's say you do it on an offer, it's going to become regular, all right? It doesn't matter. You get a brand new car. Oh my gosh, I got a brand new car. I, oh, I'm, I'm doing my thing. A couple months later, it's just a regular car now. It's like your old car, but but with less problems. It's the same thing. It's just getting you to to and from A to B. Now I couldn't imagine a Bugatti, or if I was Andrew Tate, and I'm driving Bugattis and stuff free free to taste. Um, if they're innocent, but uh, <laughs> and if I was driving the Bugatti every day, I couldn't imagine 
a Bugatti becoming a regular car. Most people that got Bugattis don't drive them every day anyway. Even the rich. That's, that's expensive even for the rich, the upkeep. But let's say I was driving Lambo every day. If I had a Lamborghini Aventador and I'm driving that every day. I really couldn't imagine that becoming a regular car. It, it'll take more than a couple months. It'll take probably a couple years. Now, I'm not even really that much into cars. I like the cars. You know, I'm, I'm just saying cars because that's a luxury thing that, that, that most people can relate to, right? Some people, I don't care about cars at all. <laughs> I care about the look and what kind of car and this and that. It'd be nice to have them. But as in knowing how to fix them and knowing this and the specs and knowing which one is the best and how much everything costs, I'm not into it like that. You know what I'm saying? But if I had the bread for it, I would do it. But my point is, my point is if you had one of them cars and you drive that car every day. Matter of fact, I got a 2018 Honda Civic. I bought it brand new, the car I'm in right now. All right. My girlfriend, she has a 2010 Honda Civic. Me and her shared that car for a long time because I had a 05 Explorer before that, before I had this. And um, I love I love my Explorer, right? But um, it, it got total. Somebody pulled out in front of me and it got total. So for a long time, me and my girlfriend shared her car. Then I got my car. I'm driving my car and I never drove her car for a long time. Anytime I drive that car now, I'm like, man, what the? Like, it don't even feel like a car to me. No disrespect. Yo, my girl, hey, she gonna be mad. Hey, her, her car, no, I'm not dissing you, babe. I'm dissing your car. But I'm saying her car don't even feel like a car to me, man. I don't like drive. I don't want to know. I don't want to ever drive that car again. You know? And I, I'm just, we both drive a Honda Civic. This ain't nothing but a Honda Civic. But, nah, man. Ain't no way. But I'm just saying that, what was I talking about? How did I get on all this? Oh, you got to miss things. You got to sacrifice, all right? To get better things in life, you will enjoy, you will enjoy all those things you sacrifice better when you come back around it. You know, and that's part of being a man or a woman. If you if you are a business person, you you take care of your own. You standing on your own two and ten toes down. Even time with your family has to be put on hold for a while. You know, your your family needs money, so money ain't everything. But your family needs money. I gotta pay my bills. They gotta eat. I got I got three miles to feed at home. I got a woman. I got four miles, including myself. I got a woman. I think about them before I think about me. But I got to take care of me to be able to take care of them. So if I ain't out here grinding, how can I take care of them? It's like back to being on the airplane, right? Um, when you put the thing, if y'all get in an accident and you're on the airplane and the little thing that come down to breathe, whatever that you got to put on your face, I don't know what that's called, but you know what I'm talking about. Use your imagination, all right? When that comes down, the instructions say, put it on your own face first, then put it on the passenger, your, whoever you're trying to save, face second. That way y'all both most likely have a better chance of surviving. If you're frantic and you're putting a thing on the other person's face first, just, yo, y'all mo both are most likely not going to make it. You see what I'm saying? So you got to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else. That's like you got to love yourself to be able to love anybody else. You got to care about yourself comes first. It sucks. It don't sound right, but it is. But I really don't expect everybody to understand that because most people are the exact opposite. That's why whenever you in grind mode, people try to stop you. That's why every time I speak on people trying to stop me, people say, oh, nobody tries to stop you. You're just in your head. No, that's because most people ain't out here grinding. Most people ain't out here doing nothing. You got goals, but you ain't even putting the first foot towards it. I mean, you got to keep doing it, all right? Sometimes you're going to fail. You got to keep moving, though, regardless. That's why whenever I grab the weights, somebody tries to say, hey, hold on, let me talk to you. No, you don't talk to me while I'm grabbing these weights, man. This is my goal. True. My goal wasn't to come in here to talk to you. That's why every time you're doing anything, you say anything, you could be on the phone or whatever. Somebody says, huh. They want a part of it. Get your own. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't even give the people that's homeless. I'm sorry I don't. Not these days. 10 years, 20 years ago, it was different. But now, it's so much easier to make money now. You know, if you're an able body grown man, everywhere is hiring. Everywhere is hiring. You know, there's so many people who are making millions of dollars on social media right now. And everybody's hiring. Let me elaborate that. There's jobs that you used to have to have all kind of college to get. 
that people are getting just walking in off the streets because these businesses are desperate now. There is no way I'm giving another grown man a dollar, especially if you able body. No way. Or a grown woman. If you ain't doing nothing for me, you ain't getting nothing from free. <laughs> that ain't how the world work. I work for mine. I grind for my. A lot of people thinking I'm wrong right now. I used to give people the shirt off my back. I remember times when I was homeless. And I gave other homeless people, while I was homeless, I gave other homeless people my last $2 and I was hungry. I ain't never been selfish. And that ain't what I'm saying. But I'm saying the, the times have changed now. The times have changed now. It's more money out here to get and it's easier to get. It's just nobody wants it. I seen a man the other day at QT gas station the other day. This one guy I used to always see. I be telling people about him. And uh, I had videos of him waiting on people outside of the get out of, outside of the gym at 2 o'clock in the morning. I be telling people don't come out at the same time. I come out is different at 2 o'clock in the morning than it is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. All right? Danger is danger. Night can be. No, but most people that's out there at that time ain't out there for a good reason. Or they're very desperate. Even if they got a good heart, they're very desperate. Things happen. All right? So, long story short, it's another guy. I only see him once in my life. He was standing outside. I'm, I pulled up at the gas station, right? I had just worked out. I was going in there to get some protein bars for lunch when I go to work. So, so what happened was he's standing out there by somebody else's car. I'm thinking it's his car at first. He's just standing by their car. What he was doing is waiting to beg, right? So, and I'm not talking crap about it. I'm telling the story, right? Listen, so... I go in the store, I'm buying scratch offs, this and that, and the third. I'm buying all the stuff. I'm balling out in the store. I spent about $300 in the gas station, even though I wasn't even going there for that. And I lost the money. I didn't even care. It ain't that I got money like that. It's just I keep money co coming in constantly. My bills are paid. My credit is good. I ain't in debt like that. So, you know, rich people don't really save money. We just chase it. We chase it so we can get a bigger bag. You know, I'm not even saying I'm rich. I'm just saying we because I'm going to be, right? You don't just speaking. I'm not doing a speaking into existence thing either. No, I'm grinding for it. Ain't no speaking to existence, nothing. You work hard. You ain't getting it, all right? Goals ain't going to happen. Hang your goals up. So I step outside the store. Same man out there. The car is gone, so it wasn't his car. And he's standing there about to beg me, and I'm cussing him out without saying nothing to him directly. I'm just, better leave me alone. Just say stuff like that. So I get in my car. Because I'm, I'm, I'm telling him basically without having to tell him directly before you even ask me. Because I know he's about to ask me. So I'm telling him no before you even get in. We're not about to get in this conversation. I got to go to work. You know, I don't got time. You don't got time for everybody. You don't owe nobody your time. I don't care what nobody say. You don't owe nobody your money or your time. You don't owe nobody anything. You own this earth by yourself. He a grown man, able-bodied grown man. Seem like he in his right mind. Can't be too much in his right mind if he out there, I guess. But long story short, I'm not talking crap. I'm not dissing nobody for being in that situation. Because I was in a situation myself for years, half of my life. All right. So he had a cell phone. He's playing with a smartphone. So you got a phone that's on with a bill and all that. I don't know if he got straight talk or whatever, or he got a bill, whatever. But you're an able bodied grown man. Look like he wasn't, I don't know him, so I can't just elaborate the whole thing. I'm judging the book by its cover. But you could be out there doing something. It was 2 o'clock in the morning, so he couldn't probably be out there mowing grass or whatever. But when, when it's time, man, dude, you grind. You grind. You don't give no, I, man, dog, I ain't telling nobody to give nobody nothing. But if somebody's mad at me for not giving somebody something, you give it to them then. Hi right, there, you see? You see? Yeah, you see. But no, nah, man. I ain't got no I ain't got nothing but enough to get to feed me and my family. You know? I got enough to feed me and my family and I'm grinding to make a better life for us. So if I give it all away to able bodied grown men, that's the same way I feel time is money. That's the same way I feel in the gym. If I give all my time to other grown men who are trying to talk to me, where's my workout? All the results that y'all see, all the weights that I can lift, that came from working out. That didn't come from just showing up at the gym. 
That didn't come from a conversation. If it does not give me results, I am not doing it. Do you understand? If it does not give me results, I am not doing it. But what about people they want to learn from you? I ain't got time for that. Even if they want, let's say everybody wants to learn from you. A lot of people just trying to hold you up. But let's say they genuinely want to learn from you. Genuinely, whatever. If they want to really learn from you, right? Okay, if I, if I stop my workout every time, even if they really want to learn from you, if I stop my workout every time, my results are gone. I, pay a mem- I didn't pay a membership to come in here and teach nobody. I'm not getting paid for that. Why don't you become a personal trainer then? No, that's not the life I want to live. You know what I'm saying? People always ask me that. Why don't you do it? You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's a good life. I wouldn't like being a personal trainer. I'm not a people person. And then I get mad when people don't listen to me. Then I get mad when I'm trying to tell somebody something and then they cut me off and try to tell me and they be teaching me. No, man, I can't talk to you. And I'm supposed, I'm supposed to live my life like that? I'm supposed to make a living off of that? That's supposed to be what I make my living off of every day? Man, that would be terrible. I would not enjoy that one bit. I would not enjoy that one bit. And then the fact that most people are not even into fitness. Most people don't understand what it takes. And they ain't got what it takes to even to, to pay attention. Now, people can change. You know, I used to be a beginner myself. I'm not dissing beginners. I used to be a beginner myself. I just don't got the time for that. I don't got time for that. All right? Well, somebody had to teach you. Right, right, right. Wrong. Wrong. I taught myself. I studied. I grinded. I didn't go to people in the gym to learn how to work out. Because guess what? People in the gym didn't know how to work out. Guess what? The coaches in the gym, I analyzed this. When I was a beginner, I looked at it. Not dissing, but I'm just saying. Why would I pay a coach? And I'm not speaking on all coaches. Out of all the coaches that I've ever met in 10 years of working out, 90% of them don't look the part and 90% of them don't know what they're doing. And I'm speaking from my expert opinion. Yes, I am calling myself an expert because I am. They don't know. If you don't look the part, you're not getting my hard-earned money. Why would I come in the gym and pay you my money when you can't even get yourself right? Nah, man, that sound harsh, but reality, reality is harsh. If you really want results, you got to quit sugarcoating stuff. You got to stop expecting everything to be sugarcoated for you. I made a short video yesterday talking about, um, I want to try this ATL, um, chicken wing spot, which I don't, I'm in Anderson, South Carolina, right? So people need to stop naming things, different cities. It ain't ATL chicken spot. I don't care if y'all from there. <laughs> But uh, it's, it's you and Anderson, bro. So what I'm trying to say is I, I, was, I made a short video, long story short. I made a short video talking about the ATL chicken spot. I wanted to try it. And I was explaining it to people because people were going to say, why don't you try it there? Because I said I already had my, enough food today. Okay? I, I believe in cheat days. But you can't over-cheat. If you're overdoing it, if you, most likely if I'm overweight, that means I'm going overboard. All right? Me gaining weight or anybody gaining weight only comes from eating too many calories. Now, the amount of calories you need and the amount of calories I need, two different amounts. The amount of calories I eat will make some people lose weight and it'll it'll make some people lose weight and it'll make some people gain weight. All right? Depending on who you are. For instance, Shaquille O'Neal and Little Kim shouldn't be eating the same amount of calories. Comment, like, subscribe, share, holler back at your boy. Anything you want me to elaborate, hit me up in the comments. Um, click the link below top 10 misconceptions about weight loss. This video was a freestyle. Um, that video I put effort into, I actually wrote things down and said them, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Click the link, man, dude, if you want results, if you're serious about your inquiries, man, man, it all never mind. No, ain't no never mind, man. Serious inquiries only click that link. It'll change your life. Take notes. Pen and pad. Comment, like, subscribe, share, holler back at your boy. Peace.